Yeah, uh, he's actually still in Carolina right now, so he hasn't even boarded that plane. And, and this is an incredible turnaround with the game being in just 48 hours that he might be able to play. But uh, Ian spot on. The Rams were in this thing, too. And the Rams were in this thing because of the way Christian McCaffrey ran last week. Christian McCaffrey of old was on the field in L.A. and was... The first few drives of this game, running hard. And that was for all 31 other teams in the NFL to see. This guy still got it. This, this, guy, this was the audition tape That's for everyone that, hey, I, I, I could still bring something to your team. Rams were interested. Bills initially were interested. Niners, very interested. I reported last week that the original ask was two first-round picks. I stand behind that reporting. That's what they were telling teams. They weren't getting two first-round picks. That went down to one first-round pick. As Ian just said, Rams and Niners didn't have first-round picks. So the Niners put together this combination of a two, a three, a four, and an next year five, which does sound like, well, it's not first, but it's a bounty of picks to go to Carolina, which has been trading picks left and right to get guys like Baker and Darnold yeah. and, and Gilmore and all these guys over the years. They recoup all that. <clears throat> Connection time. Um, Ed McCaffrey Let's go. was one of the most beloved players for Mike Shanahan. Uh -huh. Ed McCaffrey played for the Denver Broncos under Mike Shanahan, Kyle's father, of course. Kyle Shanahan wore number 87 at Texas. Why? Because his favorite Ed. player in the world was Ed McCaffrey. <laughs> there is this wild cosmic connection between the McCaffreys and, and the Shanahans. And, of course, you've got the Stanford-San Francisco thing where you're going to the Bay again. Um, it's a perfect fit, and I could tell you that uh, McCaffrey's thrilled to be going there. And they just got themselves what I think is still a top-tier running back for an offense that, Jamie, we've spoken about all week has not quite had that running game going this season. Peter, no doubt about it. Is it not true that... Um, Kyle Shanahan babysat Christian McCaffrey when they were when they were in Denver. Yes, yes, it's true. So like and and Lynch and Shanahan passed on him in the draft in 2017, their first year. Solomon Thomas was the pick at third overall. Mm. His teammate at Stanford. Six years they've been together. Shanahan and Lynch. Mm. They have not had a 1,000 yard rusher. Mm. And here comes McCaffrey. Finally, that big mm. star. To, to your point, they haven't had a thousand yard rusher. The last time the 49ers had one was 2014 with Frank Gore. Wow. So when you say Frank Gore, it's like Hall of Fame. Yes, yeah, so great, but it seems like so long ago yeah. he was playing for that the 49ers. Simple. So now they're getting a thousand yard rusher. And you said it, Christian McCaffrey, he's excited to go. He's fired up. Carolina Panthers, they just traded Robbie Anderson. We saw everything that happened on the sideline there. Fired Matt Rule. You're in an organization like that. Everything's going downhill right now. They're building for the future. So for him to get traded to head to San Francisco, a team that's trying to win right now where he can be a key piece. Because you think about since Shanahan's been there, they've been able to run the ball, but it's been a staple of running backs. You've had uh, Raheem Mostar, who was there, Matt Breida, who was there, now Elijah Mitchell and Jeff Wilson. So these guys haven't gotten a thousand yards and he's done a really good job of not having kind of the stud running back but doing it by committee and letting guys come in and through the offense make yards and make plays and now he's getting a guy like Christian McCaffrey who can line up all over the field can split out and play some receiver throw a screen to him get him the ball in space hand him the ball off in the backfield he can score from anywhere on the field so this is another piece in their offense where it's plug and play determine where you want to put him give him the ball and just see what he does so excited to see McCaffrey in this offense and what it's going to do for the 49ers very excited for McCaffrey too we've taken a two-year break from Christian McCaffrey as a star and I don't like that I want him to be back I like and I respect the aggressiveness of the 49ers I, this to me says we're not doing a filler season. You know, we're three and three. Everybody's hurt. It's very easy to just meander our way through this year and maybe we go nine and eight and just miss the playoffs. We had so many injuries. We're sorry. We'll be back next year. Like, no, screw it. Let's make a crazy move. <laughs> kind of like we made a crazy move with Trey Lance. Like, look, aggressive. Like, the empire moves, they call it. There is, there, there is a, a naysayer, hater angle to this you could easily take. And it's that... If you have a great running game every single year with dirt cheap, scrap heap guys, guys, you, a very expensive running back is not in vogue right now, especially one who's hurt a lot. The critical side of it says that the connection between the McCaffreys and the Shanahan's is corny, and who cares? <laughs> Just get a running back. It's a cool story, but like, is that going to win us the Super Bowl? Because my dad played with your dad. Like, I like it. I'm a nostalgist too, but it's corny. Um, if he's a massive difference, massive, like he is going to take their running game and make a huge jump course it's worth it. I think he's going to be really good. And I love the way he fits with Jimmy. 
Let's be honest, guys. We know Jimmy's game at this time. Nice, crisp, short little passes. He is not going bombs away. He's going to hand off to Debo and throw to Christian or hand off to Christian and throw to Debo. Like, I think it just all fits Jimmy, and they're riding with Jimmy this year. My bottom line is that, that I think Shanahan, Lynch, York, et al., they want to win a Super Bowl every year, and they still haven't done it. It could have been very easy to kind of bail on 2022 and just turtle. They didn't, and they traded, and they got a guy. We'll see if it was worth it. I don't know if it's worth it yet. I really don't. He's got to be spectacular for it to be worth it. Several times the 49ers could have turtled. It could have happened when Trey Lance went yeah, down. Yeah. Could, I mean, so many injuries have happened to this team. I always tell you, like, terrible at math. I like when things are kept simple. Okay. And this equation, to me, just works for the 49ers. After the game on Sunday, they lost to the Falcons. Several players from 49ers were talking about how we cannot believe the Falcons took our our own game plan from us and did it. And by that, they meant they ran the ball 40 times. Okay. Because for as creative as Kyle Shanahan wants to be in his game planning, you still got to be able to run the ball. And in that loss, the 49ers only ran the ball 16 times. They had 50 rushing yards. This is how many times the 49ers have run the ball so far this season. That's a loss when it's less than 20 rushes two times in the last two weeks this season. That's not scheduled, but two times this season they've lost with less than 20 rushing attempts. Okay, what do you do with that? You trade for a guy that since he's entered the league averages 113 yards per game from the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Averages, which leads the league since 2017. 50 rushing yards and a loss on Sunday. Trade for Christian McCaffrey. This just works. Mm -hmm. um, there were a ton of responses, too, from current players on the 49ers, but also from around the league just well, to how got. this juices them up. Really? And I'm just curious. Like, you see, you know, um, Patrick Peterson from the yeah. Vikings. He's like, this is a crazy business. Uh, a lot of the 49ers players, like, when something like this goes down, does it kind of reinvigorate a team, especially as Kyle was talking, like, the 49ers could have been in a tailspin? Yeah, because I've said it before on this show, every team is not trying to win a Super Super Bowl. Yeah. And for yeah. McCaffrey, yeah. you're leaving a team that is not attempting to win the Super Bowl. So when you're on the 49ers and you're Kittle and you're Juice and you're those guys in the locker room and the season's kind of in between, you don't know which way it's going to go, and you see the trade like this, the 49ers are all in. It's not, all right, we'll gather some draft picks, we'll build, Trey Lance will be healthy next year. Like, no, we're trying to win this thing mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. It forces the guy, hey, maybe I'll do an extra, a little bit extra film study. I'll get an extra workout. Whatever the case may be, it's just it's exciting and it's nice to be in an organization where it's just like, yo, we're going for it all. Mm -hmm. Could care less what happens. Next man up, let's figure it out. Let's find a solution to go win football. In his running style, specifically in this scheme, to get really into the football of it. And let's Jason, get into it. you're far more uh, eloquent on this stuff, but it's that that zone run scheme, yep. one step and go. Mm -hmm. Like this is mm -hmm. what he does best. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it really does fit. But to your point, it better be worth it. Ding, ding, ding. Also, win a Super Bowl, but just win a division. Like, yeah. who's the yeah. team in the West who's like, this is ours? It's very, very uh, just sitting here percolating. Mm -hmm. This might have changed it. This could yeah. be a big one.